for me, writing uh, historical fiction, um, I think for one of the biggest challenges of historical fiction is making it feel contemporary. And in order to do that, I think the most important um, aspect is just to filter it through character, um, filter it through space and scene. So we're kind of slowing down, I guess, the natural process of understanding how history kind of leads from one moment to the next. We kind of selectively choose those moments and kind of let the scene flow. And I think also we tend to, in historical fiction for me, I look for characters who are not well known and let them kind of illuminate those folks who might be more well known to folks who followed the history. So we can find people who are on the outskirts of the historical moment who maybe kind of ventured into it reluctantly um, with doubts. They might have been anonymous pretty much. So when we fictionalize or when I fictionalize, all of those aspects kind of come into play. So I have a sense of character that is connected to history, but not necessarily defined in the same way that we would just define biography. So I like to have more of an ensemble than say some of the stars that we kind of associate with historical moments. And I think that's, you know, those are the kinds of pieces or um, those are the kinds of fiction works and kinds of poems that I really enjoyed about history and historical characters. That idea of finding a moment that might not be illuminated in historical texts, but really tell us a lot about the people in the time. In the time I spent in television, I think three of the main um, three of the main elements that were important to my work that I was really taught to uh, work on to think about were voice. A second is sound design, and a third would be pacing. Voice is just the idea of whatever the story is, especially nonfiction. So many other people are covering it as well, so there's really no mystery and no suspense in what happened. Um, a lot of the audience is really choosing an outlet, choosing. Um, a form that they like because of the voice. So just to kind of get that stylized sense of who you are as a writer and matching that voice to the material. Second was sound design. It was important. I worked um, just in sports production. So how that moment really sounded, the way that mixers were really kind of bringing those kind of subtleties of sound into the story was really important. So when we write, I think it's important to look at some of those um, any of the sensory imagery that we get in, in addition to some of those bigger questions that we are kind of evaluating, just the details and how we layer those in, how things sound, how things look. So all of those little sensory image, uh, sensory elements, the sensory elements become really important to the space. And I really learned how to do that. And also the third aspect would be just pacing and the way that film editing kind of helped you to pace and just understanding how writing kind of works in the same way. Some sentences are meant to kind of slow down the moment. Um, other sentences are meant to speed it up. So how do we, through our style, kind of get a sense of pacing into the work that matches what a film editor might do? One of the big lessons from sports writing um, that I learned was that you just don't get a chance to pick your ending. Especially, I think that's especially important for nonfiction writers, creative nonfiction writers. So you have to work with the ending that has been delivered to you. I've seen many sports fans who have been heartbroken by a result and still have had to write, have had to kind of continue with the material. Um, I think with football that was really important and just seeing the idea of not being able to pick that ending but still being able to find storylines, subplots, because there's so many going on that are just more important than um, who won in a particular moment because that's only one story that's going to be told but for everyone else We're looking for the character lines all of the you know subplots sub stories um, Little nuances that you can kind of get into it. So that's that's always interesting um, A lot of sports writing that I really like doesn't really deal with action But it deals with kind of those still moments those moments kind of in between the action so those are important to be able to find a story that's kind of away from the action, which is seems counterintuitive, but I think that's really kind of where we where we end up as creative writers, is trying to find those other spaces outside of kind of the big moments. So um, just trying to find those slices of life and, and putting them on the page.